See, what is Hindutva? Hindutva is basically an ideology which emerged in the last century, basically trying to answer the challenge thrown by the colonialism that is India a nation and our Hindus are a group of people, right? So they basically questioned your fundamental existence because they're looking from the Eurocentric lens and saying that is India even a nation? What kind of nation you are? You Are you a Tamil, Gujarati, or are you a Dalit, or you are a Brahmin, or you are a Jat, or you are a Guzar? What exactly you people are? And second, they question what is Hindu? Are you people are you even a religious community or not? So Hindutva emerged as a counter to that, you know, uh, is basically arguing that, well, these people are one. India is a one nation. And it was Hindutva at, at its core is an anti-imperialist ideology, right? It is answering the Western imperialism. It is countering the resurgent Islamic imperialism as well. So Hindutva is, many people say that, well, Hindutva is politics. Hindutva is not Hinduism. I say Hindutva is the political response of the Hindu society to the political Islam and the Western imperialism. And Hindutva seeks to transcend the divisions of caste, language, and also culture, and also other kinds of barriers and differences which Indians have. So in that sense, Hindutva seeks to unite the people as a community. It's not a homogenizing force, right? So if you look at the Hindutva, it's not saying that you the local variations or diversity has to go, you know? That was a phase, I mean, that was a phase in thirties and forties when even Congress was saying that we have to become one, we have to have one national dress, one national this thing. The communists were also trying to homogenize people. So it's, that was the you know, uh, trend of the time that homogenization, but Hindutva has outgrown that uh, long back. You know, Hindutva no longer says Hindi, Hindu, Hindustan or something. They're very comfortable with the diversity. In fact, they see themselves as the defender of the diversity now. So uh, when it comes to Dalits, you know, the, uh, that has been a bigger challenge. So Hindutva seeks to include them into the Dalit fold. And this is why you see Hindutva faced tremendous resistance from the social orthodoxy in the beginning. Savarkar was boycotted, right, by his own community. Many of the Hindutva leaders, many of the Hindutva people did not get success because they could not find an audience in the villages which agreed to their uh, view of the you know, Hindu unity, that you stop differentiating, you stop discriminating, and so on. Uh, what has happened is in the last few decades, especially after economic reforms, uh, you have this rise of the urban centers. You have the rise of urbanization. You know, and once you have industrialization, once you have urbanization, what's happened is that the people are now getting uprooted from their villages and the local communities. Now they have to come and live in the urban center, work in a workplace, maybe industry or a factory together. They're basically being forced to live together, right? So when they were back in their villages, they were living at different tolas, doing different jobs, practicing untouchability and whatnot. But when you are in the urban center, you have no option but to live together, right? So of course there are differences, discrimination, even in the urban centers, but over the time what happens, a common culture starts evolving. So what is happening in India over the last couple, uh, couple of decades is that you have the rise of the, you know, a new class of Hindu castes. So people of different castes are coming, living together in colonies, in uh, cities and so on. And they're slowly evolving a certain commonality, right? And that is giving rise to uh, this common religious identity as well. Because once you are rooted from your village from, let's say from UP, Bihar, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, you are thrown into Delhi. What is the common link which unites you? Not your uh, local culture, not your caste. It's just the religion, right? It's just the Durga Puja, it's just the some Chhat festival. So Chhat festival is a Bihari festival, but you see in Delhi, everyone is now celebrating it slowly, right? Even the people who are not from Bihar, they also participate. But that is the emergence of a common Hindu culture. And that becomes, you know, the rise of the Hindu consciousness. And that becomes the rise of the Hindutva consciousness, right? So this is the process we are seeing. The rise of urbanization, industrialization, and Hindutva is going hand in hand. That is natural because Hindutva are used for a nation, and nation is the byproduct of urbanization and industrialization. Because what is nation? Nation is simply, I would say, a, a body of people which has similar expectations, similar aspirations, similar culture, and also similar memories, right? So and that can only happen in the urban center when people intermingle with each other. 
So in the sense, the Dalits are also part of this process because this process is reshaping the entire Hindu society. So Dalits are also part of it. Also, the other part is that, uh, I mean, uh, you, you have in the countryside, especially in North India, lots of these communal tensions. <clears throat> and most of these communal tensions are between the Muslims and the Dalits on the grassroots level or the ABC caste. And because of the nature of the secular politics in India, uh, uh, those Dalits or those extremely backward caste are simply left on their own in case of a communal clash. There's no justice for them because political parties, especially secular parties, have been rushing to side with the Muslims only, irrespective of who is right or wrong, right? And that also basically uh, pushes the Dalits towards the Hindutva as the only force which stands by them when they are in trouble in a communal clash. So I think these two processes are going together. Also, there is, you know, rising, uh, I would say, uh, 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 kind of a revival of Hinduism in India, right? So uh, is Hind Hinduism is really getting stronger, irrespective of what the people say. Uh, Sanskritization is the most uh, strongest force sweeping the countryside over the last few decades. Now, Sanskritization is always seen in academic discourse as a negative thing, but it's not necessarily a negative thing, right? So if, if it's like incorporating more and more people into the social mainstream, I mean, that is good enough. I mean, if you are completely excluded from the society, you become Sanskritized, you know, you're part of the mainstream society, even though there are inequalities still, but that's a better situation than before. And that Sanskritization, that Hinduization process is also playing its role, basically expanding the Hindutva constituency among the peripheral groups like Dalits. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Dhanavad, Namaskar.